This video, produced by Samson, with the generous input and assistance of GH Towing and Crowley Maritime, presents basic information on the best practices for handling, management, and safety when using high performance synthetic ropes in ship assist and escort operations. The goal is to increase safety, promote more efficient operations, and ensure the maximum safe working life of these critical ropes. First, we'll look at the tug itself. Deck hardware configurations and surface preparation, considerations for rope selection, and typical installations. We'll be looking at two types of tugs, conventional tugs that operate from H-bits and may or may not have a winch, and newer style harbor or ship assist tugs that operate from a high-capacity deck-mounted winch. On conventional tugs, H-bits are commonly used as both a fair lead for the rope and to secure the tow line when necessary. H-bits are often accompanied by capstans to tension the ropes and cleats to provide a secondary point securing the line. The escort or harbor tug is typically fitted with a high-capacity deck-mounted winch. The winch is operated from the pilot house and often has an automatic tensioning system that allows the tug to maintain a preset tension to help mitigate shock loading and help reduce failure of the tow line. The tug's hardware configuration influences rope choices when it comes to selecting the tow rope. Tugs using H-bits to secure the rope or cap stands to haul and tension the lines require a rope with a high coefficient of friction to keep the rope from slipping under load. Ropes made with traditional Class 1 fibers like polyester are typically found on tugs that use H-bits to secure the line. Polyester has a high coefficient of friction to provide excellent grip for use on H-bits or cap stands. For tugs with greater bollard pull, or those using winches, high-performance synthetics like Saturn 12 or Amsteel Blue are called for. These Class II HMPE ropes have much higher strength with significantly less weight than the Class I ropes. They are more abrasion resistant and hold up well with exposure to UV light. They don't absorb water and most have a specific gravity of less than one. They float. The increased strength and performance comes at a cost. HMPE has a lower coefficient of friction and, by itself, does not grip well on capstans, cleats, or bits. To overcome this and to allow high-performance ropes as an option on vessels equipped with H-bits or as a backer line on winches, Samson has developed Quantum 12, Quantum 8, and Proton 8. These ropes use Samson's patented DPX fiber technology that incorporates the benefits of polyester in the surface yarns of the rope, adding enhanced grip on winch drums or H-bits while retaining the strength of Class II ropes. When working with H-bits using Proton 8 or Quantum 12, use the recommended wrapping pattern. Testing has shown that this pattern can reduce slippage as much as 50% over other wrap patterns. The rope is brought through the vertical pins then passes under and around the horizontal pin 180 degrees, then around the vertical pin 360 degrees. The wrap proceeds around the horizontal pin 360 degrees, then crosses over the rope and around the vertical pin 360 degrees. This pattern is repeated for at least five full wraps. For H-bits that are clad in stainless steel, more wraps may be needed due to the extreme smoothness of the surface. When working from H-bits, it's good practice to alternate sides and the direction of the wraps from one job to the next. This can help remove any twist in the line, a condition that affects the rope's strength significantly. When securing to a cleat, the rope should be passed around the base of the cleat under one horn, then brought over the top of the cleat and under the opposite horn. The rope is then brought over the top of the cleat and passes under the opposite horn of the cleat, forming a figure eight pattern. Three full wraps will usually secure the rope. Regardless of the type of deck hardware on your vessel, to get the longest life from your synthetic ropes, the surfaces in contact with the rope need to be prepared before installation and maintained while the rope is in use. Abrasion is the enemy of synthetic ropes. Contact surfaces of the bullnose, staples, bits, cleats, the winch drum, and the flanges of the winch drum must be free of rust, pitting, or scoring. Samson recommends that all surfaces that come in contact with the rope are finished to a surface smoothness of 300 micro inches. A surface comparator, shown here, is helpful to achieve the recommended level of surface smoothness. 
Newer vessels often have these surfaces clad with stainless steel to provide a smooth surface that is very resistant to rust or scoring and works extremely well with high-performance synthetic ropes. More information on proper surface preparation techniques is available on our website, sampsonrope.com. In order to get the most value from your investment, it is helpful to consider your tow line as a towing system rather than a single rope. The towing system has four basic components, a backer line, a main line, the towing pendant, and the messenger line. The backer is a section of rope that is attached to the winch drum. Sampson recommends that, at all times, there is no less than one full layer, and preferably two full layers, of wraps around the winch drum. This ensures that the attachment point is never loaded to the point that it could fail. The best backer line should have a high coefficient of friction to help maintain its position on the winch drum. Quantum 12 is an ideal backer line. Having the grip of a polyester rope with the strength of a high-performance HMPE rope. The backer line is attached to the main line with an eye-to-eye -eye connection, two splices joined at the eyes, or cow-hitched. When using these types of connections, Samson recommends using ropes of like diameter and class. An eye-to-eye -eye connection with two class two ropes will yield 90 to 100% of new rope strength. A cow-hitch connection with two class two ropes will yield 85% of new rope strength. The main line is the main strength member of the system. It is the longest portion of the system and functions as the working length. The main line needs to have extreme strength, equal to the operations to be performed. Towing operators should determine the safety factor that is most appropriate for each job. The third part of the system is the pendant. This is the working end of the line that is passed to the ship being assisted. It needs to be long enough to pass through the ship's chocks into the mooring bits or bollard where it is attached. The pendant is sacrificial. When it becomes abraded or cut, it's much easier and less expensive to simply replace the pendant than it is to replace the main line. Since the pendant is often used in less than ideal conditions, it should be protected with appropriate chafe gear to ensure the longest working life. Samson's Dynaline is lightweight, allows easy rope inspection without removal, and protects the rope from abrasion and cutting when passed through scored or rusty chocks. The pendant should be as strong as the main line, and in some cases, may actually be a little stronger, as this line gets the most service. Some tug operators use a larger diameter pendant with slightly more strength to maintain a higher residual strength and safety factor. The connection from main line to pendant is, as with the backer line, either eye-to-eye -eye spliced, which is preferred, or cow-hitched. The combination backer, mainline, and pendant forms a system that maximizes the service life of the towing system while providing the best performance and ease of handling. When replacing the towing pendant, it's a good idea to end-for-end end the mainline at the same time. This will help equalize wear and ensure the longest service life from your high-performance ropes. The fourth part of the towing system is the messenger line. Messenger lines are used to transfer the main tow line to the vessel in tow. A typical half-inch to one-inch diameter messenger line is connected to the eye of the tug's main line or pendant. It is common practice for the ship being towed to supply the messenger line. However, the line supplied by the ship may not be the best type, length, or quality for a successful maneuver. Many tug operators choose to supply their own messenger line, one they can count on to work well with the rest of their towing system and vessel. Messenger lines should be made from braided rope to reduce introducing twist into the rope and should also be equipped with a swivel in the connection to your pendant, particularly with twisted messenger lines. Twisted ropes tend to rotate under load. The swivel will help keep that twist from extending to the pendant and main line. Messenger lines should not be girth hitched to the eye, but attached to the eye of the tow line using a loose grommet, either spliced directly into the eye of the tow line or loosely folded over through the eye. The messenger line is then attached to the grommet with a swivel. To get the longest life from your high performance ropes, frequent inspection is important. Every time the rope is deployed or retrieved, it should be inspected, 
for cut or pulled strands, abrasion, twists, obvious distortions in diameter, or anything that looks different from the normal appearance of the rope. Checking for abrasion, both external and internal, should be done regularly. Samson offers inspection checklists that detail what conditions to look for and offers remedies where possible. There's even an app for that. The Samson app for iPhone and iPad is available as a free download. It has inspection and retirement criteria and checklists that detail what to look for, an abrasion comparator for both internal and external conditions, and splicing instructions in both PDF and video formats. Any twist in the rope should be removed when it is observed. Twist causes the strands of the rope to become unevenly loaded and can dramatically reduce the rope strength. If you find twist in your lines, remove as much rope as necessary from the winch, back to where the rope is no longer twisted. Rotate the rope in the opposite direction, working your way from the winch to the working end of the rope. Then, replace the rope on the winch drum. Presetting a new line can help minimize the rope's tendency to accept twist. Presetting should only be done on new, unused ropes using extreme caution. Contact your Samson rep for help in presetting new ropes. The horizontal angle on the tow line affects the load applied to the rope. The smaller the angle, the more efficiently the rope is being used. With greater angles, more of the force of the rope is being used to pull the vessel down into the water, and less force is applied to actually move the vessel. The load on the rope is significantly higher. Geometrically, the longer the line is extended, the smaller the angle will be. At smaller angles, a higher percentage of the tug's force is actually being used to move the vessel. Samson has a chart of working angles and the corresponding load multiplier to determine the actual loads on the rope. As an example, a tug pulling with a force of 50 tons to move a vessel with a working angle of 30 degrees is actually exerting 57.5 tons of force on the rope. As the rope's working angle gets smaller, the forces on the rope decrease. There are some misconceptions out there about the relative safety of high-performance ropes. There is an urban myth that when an HMPE rope parts, it falls harmlessly to the ground, unlike steel wire ropes. The truth is, any rope under load stores energy. Ropes under great loads store enormous amounts of energy. They demand our respect and constant attention. If the rope parts, that stored energy is released and the rope can recoil or snap back with considerable force and speed. The parted ends of twisted ropes tend to follow a helix-like pattern that gets wider as it travels away from the breaking point. Braided ropes are non-rotational. The parted ends typically follow a path away from the break and generally along the rope's axis. Never stand in line with a rope under load. Keep a safe margin on both sides of the rope's axis and be aware that the direction of the recoil can be altered by fair leads that redirect the rope's path. Never stand in the bite of any rope. The bite of a slacked rope can be horizontal or vertical. When tensioned suddenly, the rope can sweep anything in its path out of its way or pull the unaware to certain injury. Be aware of potential pinch points when wrapping ropes around H-bits or cleats. When approaching the vessel, the harbor pilot will often suggest an appropriate chalk for the maneuver. The tug crew should then closely survey the available chalks for wear and scoring and offer an alternative where the pendant would be subjected to less wear and tear. If there's a better option, the tug captain and the pilot should discuss. When the ship's messenger line is received, attach the tug's messenger line. It should be fitted with a swivel to help mitigate any twists as the pendant is hoisted aboard. With the tow rope hoisted aboard and safely through the chalk and over the bit, the vessel's crew should signal that the tow line is secured. The pilot and the tug captain begin the maneuver by gradually applying tension to the line to avoid shock loading the rope. Throughout the maneuver, the pilot and tug captains are in contact. With the operation complete, the harbor pilot will ask the tug captain to slack the line for disconnect. The ship's crew will lower the tow line to the tug where the crew will retrieve it and the messenger line. 
The tow line is then flaked down on deck in preparation for the next job. For more information on proper handling techniques for high-performance ropes and tug applications, visit SampsonRope.com. You'll find technical bulletins, splicing instructions, and full specifications on all Samson Rope products.